All right. Good morning, everybody. So we can see who are the earlier birds, not so early birds. Okay. So uh, just for those who first time see me, right? Uh, this is just what we are here uh, doing, lah. Okay. So uh, blah, 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 the team here, we just all trying to help us everybody learn better together. These are our centers, uh, our smaller classrooms. These don't belong to us. We also like rent out the classroom kind. But like this one is ours, ours kind. Okay. Uh, and then a little bit about me here. Okay, I, I just like to and climb and stuff like that. Huge climbing courses. And this is what we're doing today. And let's do it today. <laughs> okay. All right. So uh, friends at home, I hope you're looking at the correct worksheet as well. Let's uh, jump right into looking at this, uh, the first, the, the topic names of these four, first four topics, right? So we have nutrition, transport, respiration, and excretion in humans. You can see that a lot of emphasis is on humans here. Uh, we actually, for your syllabus, you all know your syllabus is the new one, right? A lot of revamp, uh, okay? So they have actually clumped together the plant topics, right? What are the plant topics left, uh, Kiran? What are the plant topics? Structure of the leaves. That one is under what topic? Hello, come, come, please have a seat. The worksheet is over here. Right, so uh, for plants, uh, you only left three topics on plants only. Uh, Cleo, do you know what they are? Transport, nutrition, Kaylin, do you know? Sorry? Respiration. Well, all living things respire, so yes, but we are looking at, at plant-specific topics. Uh, Shafia? Transport, nutrition, reproduction. Uh, reproduction. So these are only three uh, plant topics uh, you have left. And we have actually put nutrition and transport together already. Then repro, we will also put it kind of together with a human repro. There are no change. So it's only the nutrition and transport that have been uh, come together and put uh, aside as well. Okay. Uh, so a lot more emphasis is on the human body because that's, that's something that I, I especially love uh, about our syllabus here. It allows us to understand ourselves better as well. Right, so why is my why do I feel warmer on this day? Oh, they were looking at why I was why we sweat and stuff like that. Why do I feel fuller? Why do I, why do I feel hungrier? Why does my knee pop forwards when I have a kick onto my knee over here? These are all little things that we learn about ourselves as well. Okay, so for this topic over here, I would say that the only topic from nutrition, transport, respiration, and excretion, the only one that is brand new, never learned before, is excretion. All right, okay, but one thing that is in common for all of them, other than it's in humans, is actually, if you all can remember, the recurring topic that I shared in uh, the previous session. All right, uh, sorry, I forgot, I need to define it again. Connection? All right, connection, what is the recurring uh, concept that I, uh, I emphasize a lot? Movement of substances, your diffusion, your osmosis, your active transport. Are present in all three top, uh, all four topics over here, right? So you really, really must have a good grasp of it. If not, you'll be struggling every single time you encounter this question, this topic. Okay, so really, let's get that out of the way. Make sure we are good with our movements of substances. Can okay, so let's jump right in over here. Hepatic. Hepatic, immediately when we see hepatic, we need to associate ourselves with the liver. So hepatic, anything means this particular thing is connected to the liver. Okay, so hepatic. So uh, our blood vessels got two names, like name and surname, just like me, Jason Pang, right? So name, hepatic, tells me connected to what organ? The other part is connected to always the same organ. It's always the heart. Okay, so what I'm looking at over here is Artery. Away. Away from what? Wonderful, the heart. Okay, so first name is always what organ am I connected to? Second name is direction of blood flow. Okay, artery away. For me, 
Very simple. If artery away, vein is opposite. Then I don't need to remember something else. Okay. Or there's another one you can say vein brings blood into the heart. Whichever works for you. Can? Okay? okay. There are many ways to do things, huh? Right? So we are looking at artery away. Oh, vein opposite law. That's it. Or you can also top it up with, oh, artery away, vein goes in. That's it. Right? Okay. Um, Angel, help me over here then. Artery, vein, and capillary. If I were to assign one word for the function of the capillary, what would that be? Sorry? Link. Are you thinking of link, artery, and vein, is it? Okay. Uh, linking is like a physical, like, oh, I link you from artery to vein. But what, does, what happens at the capillaries? Let's ask. Friend's name is Kayla. Kayla, come. Kayla. Function of the capillaries. What happens at the capillaries? Do you know what I'm doing? I'm not dancing, holding. What is this? Sorry? Diffuse. But not just that, right? So in the in a more in a broader word, we are looking for. What is that? Okay, yes, you got it. Yes, Joan and Brian got it. Exchange. Right? Because arteries and veins, their primary function is just for the transport of something. I transport blood away from the heart, transport blood to the heart. Capillaries is where the magic happens. Capillaries is where exchange occurs by diffusion, by osmosis, by active transport. Okay, so we must keep that in mind. Huh? So therefore, in our... The word I'll be looking for is exchange. Okay. All right. So with this uh, quick recap in mind uh, about the first name, the, the name and surname thing, ah. Uh, what are vessels E and F? What are vessels E and F? Uh, if A, choose one, please. E is the... Sorry? Heap. Okay. Wonderful, thank you. That is the hepatic vein. Maybe I can ask. My brain is going to wake up. Oh, Cheng Xin, come. Uh, F. You know how to identify F? Sure, look for it. Yes, okay. So, okay, I've got. Oh, can find. Did I even put it there? So, it's the hepatic portal vein. Okay, so a little bit about hepatic portal vein. Thank you, Kaleen, right? So, the hepatic portal vein is a special vein. It is the only vein that does not bring blood from an organ directly back to the heart. We can see that over here, it passes through the liver first. All other veins in our body that you will learn from that organ, straight to the heart, really. Okay, so the hepatic portal vein is special over here. Why? There's one word. Again, I, I, I'm big on one word uh, to help you remember as much with as little as you can. So the hepatic portal vein, we're going to look at helps in the regulation function of the liver. For the liver to be able to regulate nutrient levels in your body, it must receive their blood first. So therefore, what is this little snaky boy over here? Uh, it. So, hepatic portal vein is from what to the liver? Mm. 
no problem. And Sophia, very important way from what to deliver. Brain still trying to wake up. Ah, the brain haven't wake up yet. Ah. Sarah, what about you? Small intestine. More specifically, what part of small intestine? Gastrointestinal tract is the entire thing. No, like literally the entire elementary canal. So no. Gastro tells me stomach, intestinal. So gastrointestinal tract is from stomach to the entire intestine. Okay, good try. Thank you. Small intestine got three parts. First part. Tanisha? Do all the Second part. Yes. You can see we're all waking up. And last one. Ilya. Okay. Right. So we are uh the hepatic portal vein does not specifically bring blood from any of those. It brings blood from the entire small intestine to the liver. Okay, entire small intestine. All right, wonderful. So therefore, I need you to help me to make a change over here. This one is F. This one is E. Uh, because that's the answer. <laughs> now, this, uh, if you don't make this change, everything wrong. All right, so when I type this, my brain still uh, asleep also. Uh, okay, all right, so uh, please help me to make this change over here. We are looking at F would have a greater concentration of glucose than E. But let me tell you right now, if you look at this, this person did not consume any glucose. So why would there be more glucose in F? I did not consume any glucose. Why would there be so much glucose in F then? Uh, Caleb, help me out here, please. Continue, please. Can be broken down small intestine from melto, eh? From melto to glucose. Excellent answer. Thank you. Okay. So rice and potatoes, we must be able to be able to identify these very common everyday foods and like, oh, what kind of nutrients is found in this? What kind of nutrients is primarily found in this? Okay. So rice and potatoes, very starch heavy. So you're going to be broken down into maltose and then glucose. Thank you for not jumping straight into glucose. Right? It's very important for us to remember starch, maltose, glucose. Okay. So let's do a recap as well of our enzymes over here. Shafia, starch to maltose. Okay, yes. Okay, so then uh, let's hear from Cleo, please. Starch maltose. Is it only salivary? We have one more. Where is that? Pancreatic, thank you. So salivary amylase, pancreatic amylase, so produced by the salivary glands and the pancreas, respectively. Both are amylases, so both break down starch into maltose. Okay? Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. So once we have lots of glucose in the small intestine absorbed into the bloodstream, this is something we learned very, very basic, absorbed in the bloodstream already. Oh, then go where? This is where this diagram comes into play. So after all the glucose have been absorbed into the bloodstream, if you follow the arrows, it will be brought to the liver through the hepatic portal vein. And this is where the liver can perform its regulation function. If you have too much glucose, the liver help you store. If you don't have enough glucose, previously the liver store now break down give to you, just like a bank. Right? I'm sure we all know at least a basic of how banks work, right? Not enough money, uh, go and take money from the bank. Too much money, <laughs> put in the bank. Okay, right? So simply put, that's just what the liver does for us over here. Okay. Um. Yeah, okay. Any questions about this one now? Awesome. Let's go along. So here, we're looking at our blood vessels. We have uh, supposed to be WX, Y, and C. So, <laughs> supposed to be WX, Y, and Z. Uh? Okay, it doesn't affect the question. Don't worry. Okay, so we have four blood vessels. We're looking for the vena cava. Vena cava. 
if all fails, Vina Kava sounds like a vein. So that's our first step. Okay, Vina Kava. Vina Kava. Vein. All right, so the Vina Kava is a vein and it has a very special name. It doesn't have the first name, last name kind of thing because it is our largest vein. Okay, it is the vein that is directly connected to the heart. Okay, so if I would draw again my very anatomically correct heart, I have four chambers over here. Okay, if a help me to identify the chambers, please. Okay, see, see, see. One, two, three, four. Come, let's go. Well done. And wow. <laughs> All right, well done, Ife. Thank you. Okay, so we are looking at the Vina Kava. Where will the Vina Kava be connected to? The Vina Kava will be found to the RE. Okay, it will be bringing blood in to the RE. Okay? By the way, the blood vessels and the chambers of the heart and the transport of the direction is one of my favorite things to draw. If I can just give everyone a quick sneak peek over here of what I always draw with my other students. Uh, I think it would be this. Look at that. Look at this beautiful diagram over here about how all the blood and everything flows here. Okay, but that is a story for next time. So simplify over here first. Okay, all right. So uh, Vina Kava brings blood into the right atrium. Okay, and what we're looking at over here is now that I have identified it as a vein, very simple. If it's a vein ready, these two away, wrong way. Why not? Okay. So therefore, we're not going to choose away, away. Towards correct, towards correct. And if it has therefore very easily oh, brought us to the correct answer, towards the right atrium. Okay. So that's one way to look at it. Direction of blood flow. Answer the question really. Another way to look at it is also important for us. To know that if it's a vein, it must have thinner walls. Can we recall why veins have thinner walls? Why do veins have thinner walls? Shafia, you have an answer for this. The others. I always always made a comparison between vein and artery. That's it. So your answer is absolutely correct. Thank you. Right, blood pressure in the vein is so low that you do not need to have very thick walls because the pressure won't do anything to you. We actually focus more on arteries. Well, arteries must have thick walls because the pressure is so high. All right, if the walls are any thinner in the artery, the blood the high blood pressure will like, literally punch through the walls. It will just cause the blood vessel to burst. Okay, so arteries need thick walls to withstand the high blood pressure. Veins low pressure, so don't need. Okay, All right, so that's what we're looking for over here. In a similar but not identical explanation, why do veins have a wider lumen? Why do veins have a wider lumen? Okay, then. So, blood can flow through unrestricted flow of blood. Due to the wider lumen. The wider lumen allows for unrestricted flow of blood. And why do we need this? Because BP very low. Correct not? Okay. Right. So again, if you contrast this, artery, very narrow lumen. Okay. I'm sure, kind of sure, all of us will have played with the water hose before, and then you'll cover the gap, your thumb or something. Then what happens to the water? Shoots out, right? Shoots out faster, but if you measure it, is the water pressure also increases. The narrower the lumen, the greater the pressure of flow. All right? So this ensures that I can bring blood away from the heart to all the cells faster. So all of you can get oxygenated blood faster as well. All right? So think about the function of artery oh, away from the heart. Means go where? I want to bring oxygenated blood uh, to all my body cells. Okay? All right? So keep, keep all things in mind, huh? All right, so yes, uh, question to answer is last one, C. Okay, so option D. Okay, awesome. Ho ho, let's go. 
yeah, another episode of Tongue Twisters in Bio. Can you say, would you like to try? Uh, Cholecystectomy. So let's stick. Cholecystectomy. Cholecystectomy. Yes. Okay. So uh, cholecystectomy here. Basically, uh, the purpose of me putting this question uh, here for our revision is to tell you that, hey, when you see a big word, a weird word, maybe the spelling, you don't even trust it. Doesn't matter. Read what comes after. If you read what comes after, the surgical removal of the gallbladder. Oh, that's it. That's all you need. Removal of the gallbladder. These four words will bring you back to the topic. Then it doesn't become application anymore. Right? Okay, because at first glance, what new word must be application question? Die. Okay, no such thing. Huh? Take a deep breath. Read through everything. A cholecystectomy is the removal of the gallbladder. Oh, I know already. Okay, so we will zoom in, therefore, to the gallbladder. Function. Shengxin, what is the function of the gallbladder? Stores bow. Okay, I would actually like to top it up with stores and releases. All right, stores and releases bow, right? Okay. Eh, what then? Where did where bow come from? Here, gallbladder store and then release. So, where did it come from? Is it also produced by the gallbladder then? Absolutely not, right? Angel, where is um, bow produced from? The liver. Thank you. So, this one, produced by the liver. Okay, so this one, very important point for us to uh, keep in mind. Uh. So, therefore, if you remove the bowel, you are only removing this function in green. The storage and subsequent controlled release of bowel. In. Okay, but is this one still present? Is the liver still present? Yes. So, therefore, bowel will still be produced. Uh. We've got to keep that in mind. Okay. So, over here, quite straightforward. Number three, true or false? False, huh? Okay, so therefore we cannot choose number three because bowel production is not affected. Okay, bowel production is not affected. Okay, let's head upwards. Uh, let's, let's start from the top again. Decreased glycerol secretion. What is glycerol? Glycerol is not fat, but the idea is there already. Glycerol is a... It's a lipid. No. What is glycerol? How do you describe glycerol? Glycerol is not lipid. Glycerol is not fat. Glycerol is a <laughs> of fat. Close. Kedan, okay, do you have what I'm looking for? Okay, it's a breakdown product of fat. Okay. When I break down fats, I will get glycerol and uh Sarah. Three, in your syllabus, uh, your fat molecule that you learn, see this again, familiar? Yeah, this is triglycerol. Uh. Okay, the rectangle is your glycerol. Then I have three what? Sarah, can remember? So the whole thing is fat molecule. That one is a cell membrane one. Yes, Angel, come. Show us, please. The fatty acids, okay? The fatty acids, right? So these are my fatty acids. Okay, because your syllabus fats are actually very narrow on just this type of fat only. There are many types of fats, many types of lipids. Okay? All right, so uh, if glycerol is a breakdown product of fat, Hey, look at this word, uh, secretion. We don't secrete it at all. So that's out already. Can? Okay. All right. Um, but there may be less glycerol in the body. Why? Because 
Uh, I'm talking about glycerol secretion, right? So uh, if you remove the word secretion, there will be less glycerol in the body. Okay, do you know why? Hmm? Okay. So, if they have then then more then the fat will be broken down and smaller, and they're not affecting the digestive cells. Wonderful. Thank you, Kaylin. You got it. Okay. So, simply put, uh, with an uncontrolled release of bowel, there will be less bowel at any time to be able to emulsify the fats. So, overall, rate of fat digestion will decrease. So I'll be able to break down less fats, which means that I will have less glycerol present because less of these things will be broken down. And wonderful answer, Kaylin. Thank you. Okay, so our answer is D4 only. So we have talked about why three is wrong, why one is wrong. Two, nothing to do with fats. This is why amino acids. Okay, okay. So just this one question also requires us to recall even the function of bowel as well. How does bowel work? Thank you, Kaylin. Right? Okay, so that's for question three. Ah, uh. bowel component, one of answers, Joan and Brian. Let's move on. Okay, Ooh, look at that. So we kind of talked a little bit about all the first name, last name of our blood vessels just now. So can I give you one or two quick minutes to try question four on your own now first? Very good, Brian. <laughs> Embody yourself as a red blood cell. Think, when I flow through one, two, three, four, where am I? So just want to recap some of the words we use for organ associations. Uh, we talked about hepatic and liver just now. Okay, so in this question, we can also see uh, a couple other words, right? So uh, Kayla, can you pick one and tell me what that organ will be associated to? So for example, hepatic means associated to the liver, right? You pick one word there and tell me what organ is associated to that. Renal, okay. So renal will be associated to what organ? All blood vessels connected to heart, one, yes. So that one is about artery or vein mark. So renal itself, what organ am I connected to then? The kidney is one full. Okay, uh, Cleo, can I have another please? Uh, <laughs> the aortic arc is not a specific blood vessel. The aortic arc is a part of the aorta. Okay, right? So the aortic arc is part of the aorta. Okay, so uh, since we're on this, if uh, allow me to draw again my uh, anatomically very correct part over here. All right, tell me why you laugh. Uh, okay, so uh, the aorta will be coming out from LV, yeah? LV, okay? So it actually comes out this way. It has, to, it has to curve downwards 
to go to the you must know where your heart is, ah. Then the most the most of your body, the most volume of your body is below the heart. Correct not? So therefore it has to point downwards. But there are things above the heart, right? Like your brain. So therefore, it has three primary branches like this. So where is the aortic arc? The arc long. Quite straightforward, right? Okay, so nothing too fancy. The aortic arc, arc means bend. So it's a bend on the aorta. That's it. Okay, so it's nothing too fancy. Uh, it's just part of the aorta still. Awesome. Okay, All right. Uh, what else then? Maybe I want to hear pulmonary. Pulmonary. Kanisha hey. tells me what organ? The lungs. Very good. Okay. And finally, I have one word over there that tells me heart again. Uh, 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 coronary. Eh, why are blood vessels come from the heart? Why must have another set of blood vessels over here? Right, so the coronary arteries, very specifically, they will still branch out from the aorta. All arteries connect from the aorta. Okay, so as blood exits the heart, it flows through the aorta, then you branch out into the hepatic artery, uh, renal artery. One of them is the coronary arteries, which will then supply heart to the supply heart, supply blood to the heart muscles itself. Okay. Why is there a need for a separate circulation? The blood in the heart flow in and out, in and out, in and out. Why must have a separate aorta come out to coronary arteries? You know this? Energy for the heart muscles to like pump the blood. Yes. Okay. I'll, something I always say also, uh, whenever you're answering stuff, right? Be answer me or answer whoever, right? The answer must check two boxes. Factual, relevant. That was factual, but not relevant to my question. Why are the coronary arteries even there? The blood flowing through the heart, what? Just take from there. How? Any thoughts? Ife, any idea? Okay, I'll give you a clue. Uh. The, how, how much time does blood spend in the heart per heartbeat? <laughs> in cinema, I'm not asking you all weird stuff. Uh. You know the cardiac cycle graph? 0.7. Seconds. Okay, 0.7 seconds uh, is not a lot of time for any exchange to occur efficiently. So therefore, you need to have a separate circulation which then feeds the muscles from the outside. Okay, later on in, in, a, in, a, in a question in the free response part, I'll, I'll, I'll share this more again because I have a diagram over there. Okay, so uh, these are the four over here and we should arrive at the correct answer of C. All right, okay, let's go. Okay, so moving on to respiration already. Moving on to respiration already. Okay, we have uh, lactic acid. Immediately, a process must come to mind, I, or rather I hope comes to mind, uh, Kayla, lactic acid, what is the process that comes to mind? Thank you for correcting yourself. And aerobic respiration. Okay, lactic acid will only be produced with an aerobic respiration. Okay, and we have a sprinter for 400 meters. Based on the graph, what is a valid conclusion to make? So this one, actually, not too much about respiration itself, but more so about graph and understanding the graph, right? Okay, so we have right increasing and then uh, going down very quickly here. Uh, let's see if we can be a little bit more conscientious in reading the graph, understanding it. So can I just give you a minute, uh, a minute first? Let's try question five.
I saw like a huge question. It's high disappeared. Whoever sent that question, uh, I read a bit. Uh, pancreatic juice also is alkaline. So the effect of the change in pH is not as big. Okay. 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 So, a Cleo, which did you choose? B for boy? D, last one. Produce more quickly than removed from the body. Let's have a look at why Cleo thinks A, B, C are incorrect. For the graph to show me maximum level, my graph must be up to two. Right? Okay, so always keep that in mind, understanding graphs. To know for sure whether or not a maximum has been reached, we need to see a plateau. Think think back to your uh how carbon dioxide affects rate of photosynthesis, how light intensity affects rate of photosynthesis. Right, you will have that maximum line. Okay, that one then tells you maximum. This one does not. Okay, awesome. Thank you for not choosing that. Uh, no lactic acid. Uh, Angel, why is B incorrect? Wonderful. Excellent. Thank you. Right. In the absence of physical activity at time zero, there is still lactic acid. Excellent answer. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the rate of aerobic respiration affects concentration of lactic acid. This is what I would say maybe the only one that needs you to know about the concept of anaerobic respiration. Okay. So C is up. And yes, we are done. Uh, Cleos. D is the answer. Okay, produce more quickly than is removed, therefore it starts to accumulate. Okay, awesome. So, fairly straightforward here, we're looking at a bit of oxygen uptake during a 20 minute period of vigorous exercise. How should the graph continue after exercising? So as you can see on the graph on the x-axis below, uh, at the 25th minute, we stop exercising already. Okay, so right at this point, think back to the last time you all do, now you all do 2.4 or is it 1.6 still? 2.4? 2.4, right? The moment you all cross the line, does the breathing suddenly still like die? Like, <laughs> like that. Okay, that, that's it. Think about that. Why are you still panting when you start exercising really? Right? Why are you still breathing so heavily over there? That's what we're looking at over here. Rate of, rate of uh, breathing corresponds to how much oxygen the body needs. Okay? But it definitely should not increase. Uh. If this happens, uh, go to the doctor earlier, uh, you start exercising, but you're still breathing like you want to die at it. Okay? So A is definitely out. Which other two are also definitely out? Sarah? Which other two are also definitely out? And... PND, PND go to zero. Eh. <laughs> it's like your last 2.4 ever. Eh. Okay. <laughs> All right. So answer is C. It takes some time for your rate of breathing and hence rate of oxygen uptake to slowly decrease as well. Okay. Uh, in two words, what concept is this? Why does your breathing rate not go back to normal quickly? Who's that? Well done, Kayla. Oxygen debt. Okay, I hope you can remember that, right? It's a clear the oxygen depth. So yes, answer is C. I would say this would be the uh one of the easiest questions I placed in our handout. Rather the most straightforward. Make sure we can identify the structures correctly. Okay. And K for Kayleen. <laughs> uh, question seven, do you think the answer is? B for boy, you are correct. Okay, so the thin film of moisture, the thin layer of moisture, right, ensures that the oxygen can dissolve before it diffuses in. Please make sure uh, we do not have gases in the gaseous states in the bloodstream. Okay, 
If you all think back, you all watch some hospital drama and movie, then the nurse or doctor take a switch out, then they, then they, before they inject up, not trying to look cool, one, uh, but they, what they're doing here, firstly, they point it up. Gases will, are uh, less dense than liquids, uh, so they will rise. They squat the air bubble out. Tap, 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 make sure the air bubbles out. Why? If we inject that air bubble into your bloodstream, air bubble are very small, right? Doesn't matter, uh, but your blood vessels are even small. What happens if this size of a bubble flows from a wider blood vessel, it flows like that? Then this bubble here, nothing happened, right? It creates a vacuum seal. It creates an airlock, what we call an airlock. Blood will no longer be able to flow. For blood to be able to flow, your heart must once to force that blood through the airlock there. All right, okay. So if that does not happen, blood is clogged. If that particular artery is transporting blood to an organ, the organ will be starved of oxygen. Okay, so there are no gaseous gases in the blood in, in the bloodstream. Okay, always in the aqueous states. So therefore, Kirin's answer is correct. Moisture, oxygen must dissolve first. Okay. Yes, Brian, that's a very good removal. <laughs> Okay, let's go. Let's go. Urease. Urease. Okay, so it's not an enzyme in syllabus, but likewise, you see, they already tell you. Well, I already tell you. Urease is an enzyme. Even if I never put is an enzyme, ASC also tells me enzyme, isn't it? Okay, and then you just logically look at the name of the enzyme. Urease cannot be removed urine. Lah. So urea. Okay, so it's going to be removing urea, right? How does it remove urea? What does it do? Doesn't matter. The only thing that's relevant for us today here is... Okay. So liquid A was obtained from the renal artery, B from the renal vein, C from the ureter. Here I put very big, uh, fluid, fluid, fluid. Are we able to name those fluids? Okay then, which fluid can you name? Oh, haven't learned yet. Why? Anyone also like that? Okay, on you. So try, try and follow. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for trying anyway. Um Kanisha. Yes, Kanisha. Hi. <laughs> Liquid C is urine. Okay, very good. And Ife. Okay, this one uh, is not in the topic of excretion at all. What is the name of the fluid in the renal artery and the renal vein? What are renal arteries and renal veins? What are they? It's a vessel. So what is the fluid in the blood vessel? Even you can tell me, right, Gideon? What's the name of the fluid in the blood vessel? Just blood. Just blood. It's just blood. Okay. <laughs> can I ask you for what? Huh? So both are blood. But... Oh, sorry, I think you're right now already, right? I want to have a space in front. I want to differentiate these two bloods. What kind of a blood it is? You think about it. If it's renal artery, artery, A for away, A from away from the heart. Means renal artery brings blood from the heart to where? To where? Renal artery is away from heart to where? The kidney. Right? That was what Kayla helped us with just now, isn't it? So this one, if I'm going to the kidney, the many functions of the kidney. The one function I want to look at is the kidneys filter blood. So therefore, we know R3 is unfiltered blood. And hence, we know vein filtered blood. Is this logical? Can we understand this? If you cannot, please shake your head. Ah. I can help you understand further. Ah. Can? Okay, very good. I appreciate the head nods. Okay, All right. So unfiltered blood, filtered blood, urine. 
we are going to focus on, quite obviously, we are looking at urea. So there'll be lots in unfiltered, theoretically none in filtered, lots in urine as well. Okay? Which liquids or liquid will cause moist red limus paper to turn blue? Which is our best answer here? Shafia? Just guess, come, just guess. See, the only liquid B we have. What do the kidneys do to urea? Forget ah, uh, okay. Uh Kanisha, what do the kidneys do to urea? Yes, okay, simply put ah, uh, kidneys remove urea from blood. That's it. Right? Okay, so of all answers, B is the one that will not have urea. Filtered blood, no urea. Why? Why did that question mark appear in your head? Very good. So, like I said just now, theoretically, there will be none. Okay, so in this MCQ question, we are looking for what is the learning outcome. We're not going to details in the numbers. Because, yes, you are correct. Like, realistically, not all will be removed. Okay, so in this question here, we are asking you to recall functions of the kidney first. Okay, so we're looking at the best answer possible. Here, filtered blood, we take it as no urea. So, or rather, if you want to stick to the some urea present, right, which means that not enough of the gas will be released. Does it make sense here? All right, so it's also about exam techniques, understanding what the MCQ is trying to test us. If I look at this question, what kind of knowledge am I required to answer this question properly? Okay, so yes, while Kelly is correct here, filter blood will have some urine still, uh, urea still. In this in the context of this question, not enough to cause my litmus paper to turn color. Is that logical now? Easier to understand? Wonderful. Thank you, Kelly, for uh, asking that with, with your expression. <laughs> so we are looking at unfiltered blood and urine. Unfortunately, we do not have A and C. All right now. But both will have urea, isn't it? So why do I want the answer to be liquid C only? I'm telling you it's liquid C only answer. Why? Both have urea. How are they different? Yes, Kushi. Concentration. Which liquid? Urine. Uh Angel. <laughs> Urine or unfiltered blood, which one have a higher concentration of urea? Urine. So based on the, the, the explanation I, uh, I, have with, uh, I shared with Kaylin earlier on, the one with the highest concentration will therefore be the one that is more likely to give me that color change. Okay? Okay? Awesome. Sorry. So this question is because when I saw this over the many years, uh, also we'll get confused right? because of the questions that Kaylin asked as well. All, right? all these things right, will appear on. You need to be able to make a best guess as you can in this context here. Okay? Because let's say you do see this in your end of your or even in your O's. Don't make a reason. Hey, filter blood, you still have urea. <laughs> they, are, they are asking you for a reason as well. Okay? Got possibility, but very unlikely that they will make an error. Because for those big exams, right? Many rounds of checks. Huh? Okay? Got possibility, but doesn't mean it's, it's, it's likely. Huh? Okay? Awesome. Thank you for uh, bringing that up. And yes, Brian, you're correct. Before I move on to the next question, I want to ask, what could this gas be? What could this gas be? A little bit of chemistry now. Okay, let's say it's ammonia. Why ammonia? It turns red lemon's paper blue tells me any alkaline gas, correct? So yes, answer is ammonia. Why? Because 
What? How is urea produced? From the, you know, the emanation of. Okay, right. So over here, another point of revision, ah. Uh. Urea is produced from the deamination of amino acids. Deamination. What am I doing? I am removing the, the amine from the amino acids. Okay? So this is something that we don't really have to dive too deep over here, but we are removing the amine group, which is a nitrogen-containing uh, portion of the amino acid. Okay, this one you need to know from biological molecules on uh, the session one uh, topic. Uh, what is an amino acid? It has one amino group and an acid group. Amino acid. You should know that. Uh. Okay, so deamination is taking away the amine group. Amine, by removing it, it will be converted into ammonia gas. So yes, Kayla is correct. Wonderful. And Jordan and Brian at home. Yes, yeah. Absolutely correct. Okay, the gas here is ammonia. All right, say nephron, a nephron over here. Where and what effect does ADH have on the nephron? Before we answer the question, ADH is released by Chengxin, released by the Where is ADH released by? Oh, yeah, what? It's really, very glad. Very good. I don't remember it. Poppy? Oh, yes, yes. Okay, so on page 40, I have a regulation there, right? So, ADH is released by the pituitary gland, but you realize I say release, not produced. So, what produces ADH? Yes. Yes, Kaylin. Produced by? The hypothalamus. Okay, keep that in mind, huh? Right, so ADH has kind of like that liver gallbladder relationship, right? Liver produces bowel, then the gallbladder is one that releases it. Hypothalamus produces ADH. While uh, it is released by the pituitary gland. Okay. All righty. So, question should be a fairly straightforward uh, answer. We are looking at D. All right. Site 2, more water reabsorbed. Cleo, can you name site 2 for us, please? Collecting that very good. And if a site one is the glomerulus, very good. Okay, glomerulus. Wonderful. Any questions to ask on the front? Let's go. Last but not least, look at dialysis. Look at the key properly. We have the shapes of the molecules there. And note that the lower portion is the dialysis fluid. The upper portion is our blood. And yeah, pretty straightforward. You're going to choose what is which circle. I mean, can inside your... Are you going to take O's? Are you IP or O's? Uh, but you will still do this maybe next year or so. 
it was uh, at the end of the day it still will do us because it will not be a year five year six thing. Yeah. Anyone else IP? All right. Oh, what? And NJ. All right, so okay. Have you learned this then? Eh? See, that's all with IP schools. <laughs> I'll say problem, lah, but like very difficult to yeah. Yeah. Because the they just the ministry does say, okay, by year six, you all must know this in the school just jumble. Then people like me problem. I have a very difficult to <laughs> so thanks for your patience. Uh Sophia, then answer question 10. Is it either A or C? One of them is the correct answer. Uh, Sarah, are you chose? C for correct. Very good. Yeah. The black dots must be glucose because I need to have a healthy concentration of nutrients in the bloodstream and dialysis fluid. Keep in mind, I want to say healthy concentration and not same. Why healthy? Let's say I determine that whatever this person's body type and everything, you need to have 10 units of glucose in your bloodstream. I will make sure that my dialysis fluid has 10. I don't go and test you immediately. Oh, you have 8 now. Ah. Okay, I put 8. Why? If I deem that after from the test, ah, not, not I deem. Ah, the test say for healthy level for your body needs 10 units of glucose. Whatever level you are right now, I'll put 10 in the dialysis fluid. So that you must understand, people undergoing dialysis are likely to also be very ill. Their health not going to be very good. So if they come in, in at that point, they are malnourished, then the glucose will enter their bloodstream. Right? So if they are going to be sitting there six hours a day for up to thrice a week, might as well I'll help you with some of your nutrient levels as well. So all the good stuff, like glucose, same uh, healthy concentration. So that's the black one. Okay. Right. Um, the white circles, you will see that they are only they are not found in the dialysis fluid in, only and out. So this this means that the dialysis fluid is removing it from the bloodstream. And then the big circles, protein, protein larger than the pores of the partially permeable membrane. And wonderful, ladies and gentlemen. Let's have a look at our free response questions now. There are amino acids and proteins in the blood. Both are present. Okay? Because if it's amino acid, then you will exceed it. Yeah. Amino acids are small. Okay? Awesome. Okay, so here we are looking at pressure and left side of the heart changes in a single heartbeat. This kind of question, actually, also in a very, very unique way. Uh, hopefully, I can share this with you. Uh, I will actually ignore the graph first. I will zoom right into this. Okay? Semi-lunar valve. And this is left side. Can I have the name of the semi-lunar valve on the left side of the heart, please? Name of the semi-lunar valve on the left side of the heart. I always share two R's with all my students here. If you cannot recall, please refer to the beautiful revision kits you have in front of you. You need to. What is the name of the semi-lunar valve on the left side of the heart? Joan, that is an atrioventricular valve. And Jolene, one of that is the correct answer only. What is the name of the semilunar valve on the left side of the heart? Yes, Brian. Nick, that is an atrial ventricular valve. Yes. The bicuspid valve is the atrial ventricular valve, meaning that it's found between the atrium and the ventricle. The semilunar valve is found between the ventricle and the vessel that brings blood out. If I'm on the left side of the heart, it is therefore left ventricle to aorta. The name of the valve is after the vessel 
and is hence the aortic valve. Okay, so therefore we have some space over here. I state the aortic valve first. The next thing I want to look at is question is asking me to determine when it closes. Okay. So when an aortic valve closes, I must think, let's recall first, what is the function for valve? Okay then. Valve. That's it, right? So we keep it simple first. What do valves do to prevent backflow of blood? Okay. With that in mind, hey, if my aortic valve closes, is the blood trying to backflow or is the blood flowing in the correct direction? Do you understand my story here? If the valve closes, is the blood trying to backflow or is the blood flowing correctly? Uh, Shaxin, it is trying to backflow, isn't it? Okay, so I will share with you over here. Uh, the first thing we state after identifying aortic valve is to write down the regions it is associated to. Actually, before I write, just look on screen first because this one is a very specific way I'm writing. Uh. So the first thing we state is the two regions, left ventricle and aorta. Okay, next step is direction. So Sheng Xin said, blood is trying to flow in the wrong direction. I will therefore point in the wrong direction, this arrow. Okay, now I will flip it around. This arrow, actually not an arrow, it is an inequality sign. Okay, so therefore, the last step to this is, why will blood flow from region A to region B? Blood flows from region of what is this quantity that causes blood to flow? Blood is just like us. If the room very squeezy, we don't want to be here. We want to go to a place that's less squeezy. Concentration. Close enough. But squeezy means, what, what are we looking for? Pressure. Wonderful, Ife. That's why it's a pressure graph right now. Okay, so therefore we put a big fat P over here. And we are done. Okay, uh, let, let me uh let, let you all write down first, then I continue with this explanation here. Okay, so how do we understand this? How do we put this into a coherent sentence? The aortic valve closes when the pressure in the left ventricle becomes smaller. Then the pressure in the aorta. Done. That's it. Okay. And this technique of finding out what happens to the valve at which point in time applies to all my valves. Any valve. First, you identify the regions. Then you look at this. Open or close. Then you point the arrow in the direction. And then pressure. That's it. All of them are like that. Okay. So in this case, the aortic valve closes because the pressure in the LV is smaller than pressure in the aorta. Okay, this question asks, first closes. Hence, we are looking for lines A, B, C, D. Which one, when does the pressure in the LV first become lower than pressure in the aorta? Can we understand this inequality thing already? Okay, right? Which point is the question? P is for pressure. Pressure in the left ventricle. So pressure in the left ventricle. Oh, sorry. Opposite. Uh. When does the aortic valve close? Because the pressure, yes. Yes. Yes, then the pressure in the aorta. This is the cause. This is the effect, uh, not the other way around. Okay, thanks for bringing that up, Kushi. Okay. The pressure change causes the valve to open or close, not the other way around. Okay? So, if we are confident with this, if A, the answer is B is when. Very common wrong answer. Eh? Why? Ah? See, ah, solid line is ventricle pressure, right? You can see that this dash dot is aorta. Ah. So, if A at B, ventricle pressure higher than. Eh? Is that clear? You can see now. 
Can you see that? Green is my ventricular pressure. Blue is my aortic pressure. At line B, ventricular pressure is greater than aortic pressure. It is at this exact moment that the aortic valve opens. If you can you share me what led you to choose uh, line B? The lines, huh? Okay, so actually, make sure we can look at the lines correctly, ah. Uh. Okay, so Kaylin, do you have an answer there? Okay, at A, the valve is closed. But question is looking for first closed. So if it was already closed, that cannot be the answer. We are looking for when does it do this? When does it first open? Yes. Look at this. Uh. So if I tell you just now, based on uh, my explanation, my discussion with Ife, at B, the valve opens. Then only after B, then I can have the first open scenario. Does that make sense? And therefore, at C, I have my aortic pressure greater than uh, LV pressure, and hence answer is C. Huh? Okay. Oh, look at that. What fun to have with understanding this graph. <laughs> okay. So we understand this already. This is what we are going to try to put into words over here. At which point do the semi valves first close? Let's put it down together. My okay. Okay. Point C. Semi valves first close. Okay, pa. Okay, one more thing. One more thing. Why do this happen? Why will pressure in the LB become lower than pressure in the aorta? Does the aorta do anything to blood pressure? So we focus on LV. What is the LV doing that causes its pressure to decrease? Increase in volume means the heart is relaxing. So this means that this part is that's it. Relax. Very good, John. And that is our first explanation point. Yes, John, you are correct. When the left ventricle relaxes after forcing blood into the aorta, its pressure decreases to below that of the Aorta. He didn't share this reverse just now. Cleo, can you uh, help me continue this sentence, please? Okay, so back for blood, I want to elevate your answer a little bit better here. We want to look at preventing the excessive backflow because some blood will still trickle back on. So we put in excessive there. Okay? Okay? Uh, Shafia? Backflow of blood from the
the wrong direction of blood at this uh, valve is where to where. What valve are you talking about here? Aorta to ventricle. Aorta to ventricle. Julian, the bicuspid valve is where's the bicuspid valve between? Left or right side? Bicuspid is between left atrium and left ventricle. Semilunar valves are between the ventricles out of the heart. Okay, so I have aortic valve that is LV and aorta. The other one. Drone, try cuspid with the right side. What's the name of the other semilunar valve? Pulmonary valve. Thank you. Pulmonary valve is found between the RV and the pulmonary artery. Okay. Awesome. And again, let me just re-emphasize. Make sure you read your answers as well. Huh? Don't just copy it and, and uh, write down and move on. Okay. No problem. Semi-lunar valve. So you have to specify that aortic valve is semi-lunar valve on the list. It is in your syllabus to know it. So therefore, you can just put it like this. If you want to be safe, aortic semi-lunar valve. Right? Full name is aortic semi-lunar valve. Okay? Wonderful question, Kaden. Thank you. Okay. Anything you want to clarify further? Awesome, thank you. So let's move on. Part B, we're looking at how cardiac output changes if the aortic valve weakens. So we are riding on the previous part of the question about what the aortic valve do, aortic valve does. Okay, so if the aortic valve weakens, this will not be as effective anymore, isn't it? Okay, then how does it affect cardiac output? What is cardiac output? Break down those two words. Uh. Cardiac refers to the heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Output refers to what? Is it the amount? amount of blood what? Output. Yes. Okay. So cardiac output over here. Well done, Kaden. Thank you. Cardiac output is the amount of blood pumped out per heartbeat. Nah? Okay, we want to focus on pumped out, pumped into the aorta because this question here we're focusing on the left side of the heart. And question also specifies aortic valve is the one that weakens. Okay, right? So if we have already written down in green above here the function of the aortic valve, and if it weakens, this one. Will be diminished. It will. It, it will still. It is still present. So it will still kind of prevent the backflow, but there will be a lot more backflow than than good really than healthy really. Okay, how will that affect cardiac output? Number one and number two effect on the patient's body. There are two parts to this question. Ah, uh, please make sure you read it correctly. Ah, uh. okay. So firstly. Uh, Angel, cardiac output, how does it change? How would that volume change then? Would I be able to, with a weakened aortic valve, does the amount of blood pumped out per heartbeat increase or decrease or remain the same? Decrease? Yes, you are correct. Okay, so that's the first thing in mind here. It decreases. Okay? If a, how does this affect the body? 
Sorry? Pressure increase? Pressure wear increase. In the valve. Okay, yeah. there will be changes in pressure, but the question is not asking about pressure here anymore. Because when you talk about cardiac output, you're looking at oh my God, amount of volume of blood. So Angel said, less blood pumped out already. So then your body cells stop? If I... Correct. So if you were to give me a, 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 a feeling, what happens to the body cells? They receive less blood. Overall, the person may feel more tired because less oxygen for aerobic respiration. We see that links over here. Okay. Come, let's go. Thank you for your help, everybody. Mm, we talk about the, the valve first. Okay, I can go with uh, resulting in fatigue, resulting in him, her feeling more tired or lethargy, anything along those lines. Okay. Okay, look, you cannot see the my words properly. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we are, we are going to get curtains soon. Okay, uh, Brian, uh, Brian, you make a guess, you tell me. I tell you whether correct or not. Okay, come, moving on. Oh, with reference to a named example, describe the importance of donor, donor recipient matching in blood transfusions. Which concept are we, are we talking about here? Which concept in this topic here? Blood groups, ah, do we know your blood groups, your own blood types? Oh, okay, ah, all right. So, the importance of donor recipient matching in blood transfusions. Who is universal donor? Why are you surprised? Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> right, <laughs> who is universal recipient? Maybe very good. Okay. So yes, we're talking about blood groups and agglutinations, right? So here, do we just take the easy way and say uh donor O recipient A B? We need to describe the importance right, using named example. So what should we choose? This one very open ended. You can choose many uh permutations in it. Okay. Uh Angel, what's the one type? Yeah. A, okay, uh, connection, I bought that. 
Can you give her? Why not? Okay, uh, so that uh, is not explaining. Because that is the conclusion. Like, oh, okay, I remember. O can only receive from O. But we want to come down to the science here explanation. Why you cannot donate to her? And or something, yes, <laughs> right? Because we must remember there are two words we need to. We must remember two words: anti something, anti something. You only remember one of them. Yes, we'll talk about antibodies as well. So between antigens and antibodies, which one is what? Okay, so over here, very just very quickly here, antigen, antibody. Okay, antigens. Let's open to this instead. Are the agents guarding the red blood cells? Okay, so they kind of a little bit of helps you remember what they are. Antigens are the agents on the red blood cell. Okay, so they give the cell the identity. So blood type A has antigen A. Okay, right? So antigen on the cell is the identity of the cell. Antibodies are the busy bodies in the blood plasma. Okay, so just floating around there. Okay, so antigen, agent on the cell. Antibody, busy body in the blood plasma. Okay, so hopefully that helps you a little bit better to remember. Huh? Okay, so once more, Angel, you blood type A, what antigen you have on the red blood cell? What antibodies do you have? B, very good. You will not have naturally complementary ones are, huh? because then, then you die up. Okay, you will not even be born really. Okay, so you will always have opposing antigen antibodies. Don't remember your antibody. Remember your antigen, then just opposite. Huh? Because your antigen is the one that gives you your blood type. So they are easier to remember. Okay, so therefore, connection is blood type O. What do you have? Both antibodies A and B, where? In the blood plasma. Then your red blood cell how? Bota. Okay. okay la. Not bota, la, right? So don't have the, these two antigens, but there are other things present. La, right? But for our syllabus, empty. Okay. That's it. Right? Because now if her red blood cells enter your bloodstream, her antigen A, oh, got friends to make in the bloodstream, the blood plasma. What are the busy body do? Hey, 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 don't, don't, don't go to the don't go to the lungs, don't go to the liver. Then they all come here and chit chat. Then they start agglutination. Then they die. The last chat ever. Okay? So that is what we are thinking of. Okay? So thank you, girls. We will use that as our example over here. Okay? Uh, 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 okay. So we will start with the antigen portion. Okay? So uh, if a... Start strong with this. If a blood type A donor to donate blood to a blood type O recipient, is antigens A, uh, not antigen A's. Okay, antigens A. No, please no. <laughs> Do you know what is recess factor? You all see your blood type. 
A plus A minus O plus O minus one. This one not whether you go or bad, ah. Uh. Not whether you go to the battery or magnet, you will get stuck, ah. Uh, four plus. This one is about whether you have or don't have yet another type of antigen antibody. We only learn one type of antigen, a uh, one group of antigen antibodies, which is this one. So we don't go any further. Just say ABO. Okay, there are many others. Oh, uh, for you. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's come over here. Huh? Uh, antigens A on the donor red blood cells will react with um uh, Cleo. Uh, react with antibody what? Very good. I want to add in this thing over here because I want to show my knowledge. This topic here. Uh, we react with antibodies A in a recipient blood plasma, which has both antibodies A and B e and B caps. Okay. So in blue, I have set up the scenario. In green, I have said, oh, I want to focus on antigen A on donor red blood cell reacting with antibody A in recipient blood plasma and recipient have both antibodies. Okay, yes. Oh, well, the like antibody A. Yeah. Antigen yeah. Anyone else has that? Your your must say antibody must more letter. Why ah? Uh? Did you guys explain? Oh, did somebody say here also? This is new news to me. I've never encountered that before. Huh? Minus mark for this? Okay, then follow that. Wow. Okay, see? You all teach me already. Very good. Thank you. So not just like teaching you all. You all teaching me also. Okay, so, no, I mean, yeah, I what to do. I'm here to help you do better in school. Huh? So you must follow your school things. Okay, Ken, so. Yeah, Ryan, my goodness. Ay. Okay. Don't, don't go and bring my stuff, then go to school. Hey, no, uh, this person, this overmark person say like that. No. <laughs> then go and follow your school thing. Uh. Okay, so. um, Wow, well, but thanks for bringing that up. Okay, it's, it's important for me to learn about what you're learning in school as well. Okay, so thanks for letting me know. Uh, let, let us continue. Antigen and the donor cell react with antibodies in the... Oh, here is another one. In the recipient blood plasma, which is going to... Be okay, so uh, our last sentence over here is... Uh, so now what happened? Oh? Okay, the cells will... Don't jump to agglutination. Just like how we don't jump to all the cell lice. Or the cell... Uh, 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 shrink, uh, crinate. You must have that one word first, right? So what word would that be? Your blood cells will mm, and agglutinate. Clump together. Very good. They okay, clump together. Okay. All right, so stop our scenarios, uh, right? Forming a blockage in a blood vessel that could be fatal. You know, I cannot deal with it. 
by poor and brain. Let it block the screen. Okay. All right. So uh, I believe that with this uh, one little question, we have covered two of the more complex uh, portions in this topic here, right? Cardiac cycle graph and ABO. Okay. All right. Let's move on. Picasso's and uh, Michelangelo's out, please. So Pencil and Ruler, we're looking for quite a unique take on our analysis here. I'm not asking us to draw our very typical line graphs. I'm asking us to draw a bar graph. What do bar graphs look like? Bars. Okay. <laughs> All right, please go ahead and try and draw that now. Uh, but before we do that, a... Kaylin, which one is the x, which one is the y axis? Very good. Your first first time you were correct. Relative risk. Okay. Yes, y axis is relative risk. Okay. And sorry, it's not percentage. Take out the percentage, please. It's just no units. Relative risk is no units. It's not going to be a very huge. Yeah. Then he's like, oh, then no, maybe 1% only, then mind. <laughs> okay, please go ahead and try and draw the bar graph now. Allow me to quickly hop over to the toilet.
always done and cancel the You know, okay, okay. let's not waste out. Uh, let's not waste out. I don't know what to do. So, what we're looking at here is Is it you never plan a hit? It's like so much space there, just over here. <laughs> okay, so uh, just a very quick one over here. Our bar graphs, okay. The y axis is the relative risk over here. And oh, yeah, we use a different color then. Right, a relative risk is over here, and then cigarette smoke is over here. So what we're looking for here is the we're gonna find this axis, right? When you do bar graph, uh, this is not the zero for the x axis. You just choose a spot here, one, two, three, four. You see that? Just draw four rectangles. That's it. Then below that you put zero, ten, twenty, more than twenty. Make sense? Okay. Then accordingly, you see that my y axis from 1.0 to 3.4. So seems quite likely that I will just go from 1, 2, 3, 4. All right. Okay. And then draw, 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 draw. We're going to draw for 0 is a 4.0. Then is slightly below 2, 20 is slightly above 2, more than 20 is. Slightly below half of those two things. And then draw your dash lines and give me that value. Okay? Okay? So obviously you're gonna draw it like more, more, more neatly than I have over here, but that's the general idea. Okay? Okay. Very straightforward one. Uh but what we have I have done so far, even in my very untidy one. Describe and explain the trend seen in the bar graph. We'll make space over there. So uh describe and explain the trend seen in the bar graph. What are what 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 trend are we looking at over here then? What is the change that we can observe over here? Nick, yes. Uh Jolene, overall increasing trend, right? Okay, we still have an overall increasing trend. But what else do we need? Uh when we, when we encounter such a question here. Uh, can you show what do you think? Thanks. Data. So what kind of data do you want to put in over here? Greater than 20 equals 0. Uh, 2.4. Okay, so describe and explain the trend seen in the bar graph. So we have an overall increasing trend, right? But actually, you cannot say that as uh as the number of cigarette smoke per day increases, uh risk increases because zero got don't have. Uh zero got don't have. Zero never smoke. So what does the 1.0 relative risk mean? So that is the normal risk level. So from 10 to more than 20, that is the added risk of smoking on coronary heart disease. All right? That's why relative is no percentage. So 1.0 is your regular everyday human risk of having the condition. You top that up. You are almost twice as likely to get coronary heart disease if you smoke 10 cigarettes a day. And 3.4 times more likely. Okay, so that's how we understand this relative risk thing. Uh. Okay, um, so over here, we're just looking at, we start off with what the what does 1.0 relative uh, risk mean uh, uh, in our relative risk over here. Okay, so we just say non-smokers. Just start with non-smokers.
then we do the as the smoking thing increases. Okay. So we're going to use uh, data given to us in our graph. Then just truncate it, the risk. Very good. 1.9 to 3.4. So then you're going to give one a, a very short explanation over here. Oh, I did not put enough lines for this question. Uh, Carl, what is the, what, how is smoking related to heart disease? Smoking rest lungs, or, then why is one got heart? What's the relationship? Sorry? Oh, okay. Very common thought, huh? The smoke that we inhale from cigarette will be transported through our blood. There's no smoke in our blood, huh? so we must specify what which of the three components of cigarette smoke are we focusing on. Will tar therefore be found in our bloodstream? So it cannot affect the blood, the heart. Does that make sense? So Ta, carbon monoxide, and nicotine. Ta is out. Which of these two will have an impact on our bloodstream? Carbon monoxide. Nicotine, we just need to focus on one. It is the stimulant. It is the addiction thing. Okay? So we're focusing on carbon monoxide now. Don't need to go into too much detail here. We just need to say that carbon monoxide increases the risk of... Do you know what increases the risk of? Yes, coronary heart diseases here. Okay, through what uh, effect here? The narrowing of the vessels. The narrowing of the vessels. Okay. No, not for this topic here. Okay, because question just says the trend only. So we don't need to go into too much detail here. Oh no, I did not allocate enough lines for you. Oh, okay, right below. Okay, we don't have a lot of time left. Let's, uh, I'm going to skip through, uh, see here, what are the two pulmonary conditions? Can you give me the names first? Start with B, start with E. Do you have one? Bronchitis. Uh, I hope you don't have bronchitis, but thank you. The answer is bronchitis. One of them is bronchitis. What's the other one? Start with E. Very good, Angel. Emphysema. 
Okay, so bronchitis is about the bronchi, the airways. Emphysema is about the alveolar walls being damaged. Okay, All right, so let's jot that down first and let's hop on to the final question of the day. Enjoy, you catch that? The airways one, the airways narrow. Don't read it out because you don't know. I will give you an answer key. Okay. Okay, so we're going to expression here. We're looking at concentration factor. This time is just a little bit of math. We have two examples here already. So concentration factor meaning by how much is urea concentrated in urine as compared to blood? What math do I do? Urea is concentrated by 60 times like this. So what math do I need to do to get this number? Which one divided by which one? Yeah, urine divided by uh, blood plasma. Okay. What did I find? What's my number here? This one is approximate of it's a 1.7 something, if I remember correctly. Can you is it? You press. You calculate for me. Oh, what's the number? 1.8 is so nice, man. Oh, yeah. 1.8 was something. Right? So, uh, why do we just put 1.8? Because we follow decimal places here. Okay? Okay, so a little bit about table numbers. Huh? Thank you, Kaleen. Define excretion. Define excretion. Cleo, do you have a definition for us? From the organism, awesome, that's it. Exactly. Removal of toxic metabolic waste from the organism. Was that from my kit or your answer? From my kit? Okay, right. So uh you realize that most answers outside they will say from the from the body, which is fine because that's excretion for us. But every single living thing undergoes excretion down to the unicellular organism. So if it's unicellular organism undergoing excretion, then the word body doesn't apply to them already, isn't it? Therefore I use the word organism, which applies everywhere. Make sense? Okay. All right, so uh, explain the absence of the following substances in urine. Why should protein not be found in urine? Why should proteins not be found in urine? So therefore, let's think about what usually keeps protein in the bloodstream. Which part of the nephron are we thinking of? Part of the nephron are we thinking of? Come, bear with me, bear with me. Almost there. We're thinking of the glomerulus. The glomerulus. What's the process that happens here? Ultrafiltration. Okay, ultrafiltration pushes stuff out. But why are proteins kept in the bloodstream? It cannot be pushed out of the bloodstream because proteins, simply put, are too big. They're larger than the pores of the glomerular capillaries. That's it, let's go. Okay, so, Proteins are larger than the pores of the glomerular capillaries and will remain in the bloodstream during ultra 
filtration. Okay. So with that in mind, oh, proteins are larger. So glucose, Sarah, is glucose large or small? It is a small molecule. So based on this explanation, glucose smaller than the pores and will be removed during ultrafiltration. But eventually it is not in urine. All right, Kaylin, do you know why that is so? Yeah, selective reabsorption where? Sorry? Only? I have two of them. What are their names? This though, okay. So again, we are highlighting things that we need to revise more, huh? okay? Right, so yes. Actually, we just put them all together through the nephron, through the tubules, because selective reabsorption occurs across all three segments of the nephron. Okay, that's it. Wonderful, thank you, Ife. And Kaylin. <laughs> now let's go very quickly. Maybe under correct leh. What do I call the fluid flowing through the tubules? Very close. What's the process that produced this fluid? Optional filtration, ah? Huh? Chemistry? What do I call the thing that flows through? Filtrate. So it's the glomerular filtrate. Okay. Here the the bird. Not oh, here. Light mess. Okay, so kidney dialysis. We talked a little bit about it earlier on. Here we are saying that they should reduce protein and water consumption while maintaining carbohydrate intake. So we need to talk about all three nutrient groups, right? So let's look at the maintain carbohydrate intake. Why they want maintain? So whatever you use to eat, uh, whatever amount of carbohydrates you use to eat, continue consuming it. Why? Why is that possible? Why does kidney dialysis not affect? Or rather, why does carbohydrate intake not affect kidney dialysis? What happens to excess carbohydrates consumed? Clear? Broken down and? S? Broken down into glucose and store as? Sarah? Sorry, do you have an answer already? Well, sorry, as I forget your name. Shangsin, <laughs> stop this. Not starch, that one is blunt. Glycogen, yes. Simply put, excess carbohydrates consumed 
can be stored by, by the body. But excess proteins consumed? Cannot. That's where we have the deamination thing. So must be removed. So if, if the kidneys remove urea from the blood, now kidneys fail, dialysis removes urea from the blood. If you keep on consuming high levels of protein, you must sit there for even longer hours. Make sense? Okay. So carbohydrate can maintain. Protein must reduce. Water leh? Water how? So other than removing urea from the bloodstream, what does kidney do? What is side two again? If okay. the collecting duct and Angel, what is the process you focus on that happens at the collecting duct? Was it 40? Was it page 40? Osmo regulation. Very good. Osmo regulation. So we need to maintain our blood water potential. So if the kidneys are not functioning, means there is very little. Uh, also regulatory function really means you cannot you're not able to regulate our blood water potential as well so therefore if you throughout the day let's say yesterday dialysis tomorrow uh, yesterday dialysis tomorrow next one so today don't have if today you drink normal amounts of water your blood water potential may rise dangerously high levels and you can get what we refer to as water poisoning Right, you can get what we refer to as water poisoning. Ah, uh. okay, so that's a uh, that's something scary as well. Okay, so let's keep that in mind. Ah, uh. so this one is quite a long one. So can I just leave it to the answer key? I pass it off. Okay, understand? Ah, uh. anything you want to ask first? Awesome. Okay, so that's it. What's the choice there? All right, that's it. Okay, so yeah. Right, so uh, that's our two very productive two hours times two sessions uh, over here. Any last final question to ask before we leave? Anything? Okay, so appreciate everyone waking up early and joining me here, uh, especially those uh, physically present. Thank you for coming down and enjoying our beautiful sea views here. Okay, so uh, what is this? What is this? Just a little bit of uh, forecast of what's to come ahead. So if you found it useful, if you found that you can benefit from uh, continue learning with me, get in touch with the admin, right? They will, they will uh, get in touch with me as well. We can uh, conduct it and we can discuss that, right? So this is the tentative. It's not like a hard fix kind of thing, right? So they'll keep, uh, keep in touch with the, the IG and they'll post updates here and there, okay? Right, um, and before we all go, can I have all of us please help me to... Uh, Scan this QR code first. You don't have to complete the feedback form right now. Just help me to scan it. I really appreciate your feedback so that we can just collate some responses uh, everywhere. Lah. So uh, whether I did well or I didn't do very well, you just feel free to say that. <laughs> okay, All right. So once more, All right. So my name is uh, Jason Pang, right? So if you, if I do see you in future, I will, I will be glad to see you all of you in future. But if not, uh, all the best uh, for the end of years. And uh, those at home, I hope you uh, managed to catch all the wonderful tidbits and nuggets of information I've shared. Uh, but if not, enjoy the rest of your September holidays. Bye. Welcome. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.